and wherever I go, I get comments, some negative, some positive. I've been hit on the head with a big giant purse just for wearing this shirt. Atheists have attacked me. So on that was where that's exhibit J. State appearances for the record. Mike Dickerson, I've got the report. Defense. Morning, Your Honor. Joseph Pearson, 13876, representing Mr. Blandino, who is to my left, who wishes me to tell the court that he is here in the custody of parole and probation. He's on parole and probation. He's on probation, Your Honor. Okay. I believe last time I said he was at liberty and he wanted me to correct that. All right. That being said, then, this was a continuation of the trial. State had rested on this initial case. All right. And then defense. For the witness, anybody who's a witness, potential witness on the Blandino matter, please wait outside and do not discuss your testimony with any other witness. That being said, state, uh, the rest of defense, you wish to call any witnesses? Uh, before I do that, Your Honor, I'd like to uh, move to dismiss. Um, I don't know if you want to hear an argument on Go that ahead. or not. Or... Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Essentially, Your Honor, it's the state's, uh, sorry, <laughs> the defense's position that uh, the state did not prove beyond, uh, by, uh, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that, as it required, that Mr. Blandino was a resident of the state of Nevada as required by the statutes that he's being charged with. So as you recall, there were multiple witnesses. Uh, none of them actually proved that he was a resident. And in fact, I think one of the, the, the premier the witnesses uh, from PMP was showing records that Mr. Blandino brought, uh, had filled out. And they were saying that his, he proved, they proved residence, I guess, by uh, listing his uh, a Las Vegas address. As, as you recall, we pointed out that any time Mr. Blandino filled out one of those documents, it was as a care of. There was no proof that he was actually a resident. As well, uh, filed into the record, um, and I believe we asked the court to take judicial notice of it, was Mr. Blandino's, I always get this wrong, rescission or your citizenship? Yeah, loss of nationality. Hey, loss of nationality. He is not a citizen of the United States. He rescinded that many years ago. Um, so as a result, He's not a resident, he can't be a resident. So the statute uh, requiring, the statute requiring him to register his vehicle only applies to residents. He's not a resident. Then with regard to the statute that, regarding the, um, the license, the, the actual, uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, the actual possession of a light driver's license. It was recently changed, but the prior one that we're operating under in this case said specifically, if you don't have a driver's license, there's two things you can do. The state shall require him to get a driver's license, or he has to produce a document that he can't get a driver's license, which we did file into the record. There's a document that says he is, again, he rescinded his citizenship and the DMV will not give him a driver's license. So as a result of that, um, again, I don't believe there's, I don't believe there's any issue there at all for the state to um, pursue. Um, so given all of that, the totality there, we're looking at a situation where there's one statute that just really doesn't apply because he can't get a driver's license, and the other, the state has not proven that he is a resident requiring him to have a Nevada uh, um, registration. Now, the interesting part, Your Honors, it's not like he was driving around willy-nilly without a registration. He had a legitimately registered vehicle in the state of Montana. So he's not driving around without a driver's license or, or in, you know, anything like that. He is driving, it's a permanent driver's a permanent registration. So given all of that, I think the state has failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that uh, Mr. Blandino is guilty of the crimes they have alleged to have charged him with. Right. Before proceeding further, Mr. Uh, Dickerson, 
I got a notice of denial of disqualification under NRS 43.550. That's the document that was talking about. It's in, in the record. I don't know if you have a copy of that or not. I may have a copy of it somewhere here. Can I see that just for the time being? Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, that was the part what he talked about. I don't know if it's an exhibit. It's exhibit G. Right. Right. The note, it indicates that uh, unsatisfactory documentation to receive a driver's license. Right. Yeah, that's the one you're talking about? Yes, sir. Right? Okay, no, I just yeah. want to make sure yes. because it's referring. We have not had that exhibit posted. I understand it's a motion uh, to dismiss the charge. Yeah, so Mr. Blandino uh, shows up to the DMV without the documentation necessary to get a driver's license, and all of a sudden he can drive around in the state of Nevada without a driver's license. That's his argument. There's further arguments. No, no, hey, it's my time to argue. Hold on. Hold on. Right. Objection, Your Honor. But no, no, he has a right to argue. Okay. He's, he's yeah, he's he argue. Right. He doesn't listen. Listen. This is your motion, so you have a right to respond to it. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, and then further that he's no longer a U.S. citizen because he filed some paperwork apparently with the with Nevada Secretary of State. Um, this is all below. That's the bottom line. Under NRS 483.114, what we've already proven is that his legal residence is here in the state of Nevada over on 16th Street. I believe it's 441 North 16th Street is what we've established over and over and over again. And, it, and that's been his address for years, and it was his address at the time of this offense. Um, and because of that, he is a resident. Uh, we look to his argument that he's given up his U.S. citizenship. Uh, so you bottom line is a person cannot renounce their u.s citizenship just by filing some paperwork uh, with the nevada secretary of state it just doesn't work that way in fact that's that's an issue that is reserved for the united states government not for the secretary of state of nevada not for the defendant on his own uh, this is something that is in law under uh chapter eight of the united states code under the Immigration and Naturalization Act. In fact, this is uh, not only would the defendant need to sign paperwork, but he would actually need to uh, swear it out, and he would need to do that with the federal government. Here I have a case. I'll provide a copy to defense counsel. This comes out of Washington, D.C. This is Lozado Colon v. U.S. Department of State. Here's a copy for your honor. This case generally talks about what occurs when a person renounces their U.S. citizenship. Um, and here in this case, what's unique is that um, it was actually denied. So this was an individual that was a citizen of Puerto Rico who sought to renounce his United States citizenship in you know, a, a separatist effort, uh, but remaining in Puerto Rico. Uh, and because he sought to remain in Puerto Rico, similar to how Mr. Blandino seeks to remain in the state of Nevada, um, it was denied. And so he was not able to to renounce his U.S. citizenship. It's not something that he could just do willy-nilly. The fact of the matter is, is that uh, Mr. Blandino is a United States citizen, despite him not wanting to be a United States citizen. All right. Um, on the driver's license, I mean, you know, he's shown the document under NRS 43.4550, the request to the qualification. That statute specifically says that a person must be uh, must provide a driver's license. Uh, must be driving with a driver's license. And if not, must the court shall require any person addicted to obtain a valid driver's license to produce notice, notice of disqualification of the department. Um, which he has done, but that doesn't exclude or excuse the right to drive. It's unlawful for any person to drive a motor vehicle on a public highway street or highway in the state of, without being a holder of a valid driver's license. He doesn't even say that a valid Nevada driver's license. It's a valid license. So uh, right. and whether or not he's given, and I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. notice of denial of disqualification is one of the requirements that the court is required to order him to do to show that he can't get a license. That doesn't exclude the driving. So um, as to the no driver's license issue, Motions denied at that time. As to the registration, you understand the yeah. argument they're making on that. That it's not, not a resident, right. that it is a registered vehicle out of Montana. Proceed on that argument. Yeah, so that goes to the his whole argument there is that he renounces U.S. citizenship. 
so he can't be a resident, and that anytime he's written his address, which has been established as in fact being his address where he lives, his legal residence, uh, he writes Kara or C slash O in front of his address. Uh, it's just typical sovereign citizen rhetoric to try to get around the laws of this state, the state, and the laws of the United States. Uh, it, bottom line is it, that is also below, right? We have proven that for years he's lived in this address based upon records, based upon testimony. Uh, this is where his registered address has been for all these years and including the time that uh, this stopped happening. So he is a resident, that's the bottom line here. Uh, is re renouncing his U.S. citizenship is not an actual thing. He has not done that. All right. Mr. Gerson, your response. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, I take umbrage with the constant use of the word baloney. I, 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 come on. However, Title 8 U.S. Code 1481, Section A2, basically says a person who is a national of the United States, whether by birth or naturalization, shall lose his nationality by voluntarily performing any of the following acts with the intention of relinquishing United States nationality. Section two, taking an oath or making an affirmation or other form of declaration of allegiance to a foreign state or a political subdivision thereof after having attained to the age of 18 years. Mr. Blandino has done that. That's the only requirement. It doesn't say you have to go to the State Department or do anything like that. He went to the county clerk and made a declaration that he, in his mind, is a citizen of the Kingdom of Israel. The, the, the clerk of the county took that in, wrote it, and granted it. So as far as he's concerned, whether or not that was you know, the, the procedure, in his mind, that would uh, obviate any intent on the part of Mr. Blandino, thus not making it criminal, because to him, he is not a, a citizen of the United States, or, and he is not a resident of the state of Nevada. Okay, so under 8 U.S.C. 1481, that's where we go with that. With subsection 2, A2, I'm sorry. With regard to the, um, and again, with regard to the, and this is interesting, if you look at the, and Mr. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Dickerson, sorry, hey, buddy, uh, actually got it wrong. It's NRS 483.141, not 114, it's 141. This is, uh, which is, he was talking about, but the, the statute that talks about, which is 550, which is the one that actually talks about the driver's license. Just give me a second round so I can find it. There were two statutes. It was, it was modified, it was amended in 2023, post the incident, where it initially said, uh, again, if you're going to drive with a, on the driver's license, you either, um, you have the court shall require any person convicted of violating the section to obtain a driver's license or produce a notice of disqualification in the department. Then after 2023, they re-input they re, uh, um, that statute and say, if you don't, now you're guilty of a misdemeanor. So we're talking about the statute that does not contain the guilty of a misdemeanor um, uh, information. So uh, again, the, the standard really isn't even beyond a reasonable doubt because we're not using the misdemeanor language in that sense, but again, Mr. Blandino has complied with the statutes that asked him, if you're not going to do this, either, either get a driver's license or produce this d document. And, and my point is, what is the court going to do if they find that he is you know, guilty of this? It's either requiring to get a driver's license or provide a document. He provided the document. But there's a fine attached to that without being suspended. There is no, not your honor. I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't mean to be saying that full, but there isn't, your honor, because again, the way our system works is if there's no punishment provided for in a statute, we default to the, it's a misdemeanor, and misdemeanors default to the six month, $1,000 fine. But that does not apply if the statute has the punishment built into the statute. And again, one, it's not a misdemeanor because you can see. The, the, the legislature fixed this in 2023. There must have been some kind of a problem by adding the language guilty of a misdemeanor. So our argument would be one, it's not a misdemeanor at the time that this happened. But number two, 
The punishment is contained in the statute. You can either require him to get a driver's license or have him file this document. That's a little different then, because if I find him guilty of that, then I'm restricted on what I can issue on penalty-wise. Your argument right now is that the state hasn't met its burden as is showing in the initial case that he's violated the two statutes that he's on trial for. Right That's, that, again, that, that is correct, Your Honor. So, and so I, I kind of get in front I, of... I understand that I may be on not the best ground with the license aspect, but I'm making the argument. As far as the as the uh, um, the registration is concerned, again, I mean, what can I say? You were here, you saw the rec every time, you know, Mr. Landino is smart like Fox. He put down care of every time that he was asked to put his his red his uh, address in. The state simply has not proven that he is a resident of Nevada requiring him to register a vehicle in Nevada. His vehicle was registered in Montana on a permanent registration. State, anything further you want to respond to that? Mr. Gerson has the last say on that. The evidence is clear. That's the bottom line. Mr. Gerson, any further? Mr. Blandino is asking me to just remind the court that the requirement is of a legal resident. That is the term in the statute that it is legal residence. As a result, again, we don't know. He's arguing that because he was under the restrictions of formal probation, he was not allowed to leave, and therefore he was not considered a legal resident because they're requiring him to stay in. Correct, Your Honor. And therefore, he cannot be considered a resident in a registration of another vehicle in another state would be sufficient. As well, Your Honor, as well. And again, as the license? What's, I'm sorry? As well as the license? Well, uh, uh, Your Honor, without, I mean, my client's going to testify. Uh -huh. I mean, but what I can tell you is um, Mr. Uh, Dickerson did put into evidence Mr. Blandino's uh, Kingdom of Israel passport, which he believes affords him the opportunity to drive as a resident of the Kingdom of Israel, Your Honor. So again, the question of intent, again, the state has the burden of showing beyond a reasonable doubt that they fit all the elements of the crime, that Mr. Blandino you know, fit all the elements of the crime. I, don't not, I do not believe that Mr. Blandino was intentionally uh, you know, doing this. Again, I think I'm better ground, you know, I'm better grounds on the resident argument than the driver's license argument, but again, that's that's kind of where we stand right now. So to, to one thing, to the Kingdom of Israel, when the Kingdom of Israel existed, there were no cars, there was no driver's license. That's because the Kingdom of Israel existed until approximately 930 BC. See. So nothing that he's arguing right now has any merit whatsoever in the law or in fact. Any further from you, Mr. Gerson? Do, do we want to talk? Last, yeah, I know, but you know, do we want to talk about that the signing of the Constitution, the Second Amendment, AR-15? Or any further? No, no. All right. At this time, the court does find uh, deny the motion. At this time, I think there was enough evidence at least to rebut this matter. I'm going to deny your motion at this time to dismiss. State uh, defense, call your first witness. Well, Your Honor, I understand that Mr. Blandino himself would like to testify. As the defendant in the case, Your Honor, I have admonished him of his Fifth Amendment rights to not do that. I have discussed with him the implications, pros, cons, etc. Mr. Blandino, after hearing that, has decided that he still wishes to testify. Uh, given that, and knowing what he may or he intends to testify about, um, I don't believe that um, I can assist him uh, in his testimony. Uh, for various reasons, I'll be happy to explain them to you uh, in a sidebar if you wish. However, uh, Mr. Blandino wishes to testify. Uh, excuse me? I, yes. Do you want a minute or two to talk to him? Because I'm going to canvas him regarding his right to testify. Uh, no, Your Honor, I'll be quick. I'm assuming you have already. We have, Your Honor, to ad nauseum. So, again, I, uh, I believe Mr. Blandino is going to have to testify in the narrative without my assistance. Um, sorry. Sorry. My apologies, Your Honor. 
Right, you can finish up. So he's yeah, going to testify I mean, in the narrative. He's going to testify in the narrative, uh, however you would uh, like, what you'd like him at the table, on the, on the, 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 the come up on the stand, etc. All right. So. Yes. All right. Mr. Blandino, can you please rise? Sir, you understand you have a constitutional right to testify and a constitutional right not to testify at this proceeding. You understand, sir? I do understand. You understand no way to comment on the fact that you decided to testify or not to testify. You understand? I do understand. You understand this is your sole decision to make. So no counsel may tell you to testify or tell you not to testify. You have the final sole decision. Right? I, I do understand. You understand that the state can then inquire as to any prior criminal history that you have. I don't know if you have any prior criminal history. They can inquire as to that, find out if there was a conviction, and move on from there without getting into the facts of it, as long as you acknowledge that you have prior criminal history if you do. You understand that? I do understand. Now, you understand that once you start testifying, that uh, you are not allowed to then stop testifying if you decide not to, to invoke your Fifth Amendment right not to testify, or stop testifying, then the entire testimony will be tossed out. Do you understand that, sir? So you'll be subject to cross-examination by the state. Do you understand? I believe you're incorrect on that. I think that's for a grand jury, but when it comes to you as the fact finder, my understanding is if there is a particular question that might be outside the scope of these proceedings and it might cause me to be a witness against myself in something separate that may from be... this, I could invoke the Fifth Amendment. That's true. It's something different. What I'm saying is if you cut up here and you start testifying as to the fact specific to this case, Right. Then you refuse to answer any further questions and you can toss out your testimony. You that, understand? That, that's understandable. Relating only to this case, and I do agree that right. if I start asking you anything outside right. about any other criminal activity, your attorney would then ask that that be stricken or moved. Well, it, so I, 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 I do not like using that word incriminate, but the constitutional provision is that what you to be a witness you against like. yourself. You understand yeah. that. Yeah. That if, it might that if you would refuse to answer yourself. questions that are related specifically to these incidents, yeah. to these facts, to the elements of these charges, and you decide to invoke the fifth at that time, I would uh, throw out your entire testimony. Do you understand that, sir? I, as we discussed it here and clarified Do you yes. wish to testify or not to testify I at this time? Wish to testify. Do you understand that the court controls the amount of evidence that comes, the kind of evidence that comes in? And if I find that the testimony that you're giving is not relevant, I can then stop you from testifying or have you move on. Do you understand that, sir? Yes. Hopefully All right. Move on. That being said, is it your decision here today to testify? Yes. And you've done so after discussing this matter with your attorney? Yes. Come take the stand, raise your right hand, face the clerk to be sworn. I, I'm, I'm my religious beliefs and practices and the process of where this, I cannot raise my hand, I cannot swear or affirm, but I can declare under penalty of perjury that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and that I can be prosecuted if I tell anything that is not true. You is that acceptable? The affidavit you're going to give is not going to be under the penalty, is under the penalty of perjury. It is not relying upon under the penalty of perjury. Under, under God, you understand? Correct. He will affirm and give an affidavit regarding that matter. You understand? You will raise your right hand, though, sir, on that matter. You understand? I cannot do that. Right. I can testify under penalty of perjury, understanding that I have to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. That's going to ask it. Yeah. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do I solemnly swear? Do you affirm that the testimony that you're going to give right now, Mr. Gerstin? I cannot swear or affirm. Talk to him on this matter because this I, I can supply him with Gordon versus Idaho. I will give him the affidavit and I acknowledge that he doesn't have to swear under, the penalty, uh, under uh, God or any, any deity. I will give him that. He is correct on that. But he will follow my directions. I can declare under penalty of perjury. Can I declare under penalty of perjury? to custody. So if you want a minute or two to talk to him, you can talk to him. Thank you, Your Honor. If I may. Do you want me to go down there or him come over here? You can go down there. You want me to go down there? Just come over here. Your Honor, my client has informed me he cannot uh, he cannot affirm or swear. He will only declare. I have explained to him the situation. I, I don't know where to go from here. I have, I have had this conversation with him numerous times, and again, we're kind of where we are, um, and that is why he is there right now 
and testifying on his own. So, Mr. Dickerson, do you wish to add on that? I mean, he's got a right to testify and affirm that his, his testimony is going to be truthful and under the penalty of perjury without having to uh, swear allegiance to anything on that. Right, so the statute's fairly clear, NRS 50.035. Before testifying, every witness shall be required to declare that he or she will testify truthfully by oath or affirmation administered in a form calculated to awaken his or her consciousness and impress his or her mind with the duty to do so. Huh. So then it goes on to say it's sufficient and it gives an option there, I guess. That's how I read that. I guess that I would just inquire is why he can't uh, swear or to tell the truth. Like the, well, no, I, I think he's agreeing to tell the truth. He just can't do an affirmation under, under God. Uh, I so see. I guess we have to do solemnly swear to affirm the evidence you have given this matter. Uh, so the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's an affirmation. I think that would satisfy the statute, correct? Each witness shall be required to declare that he or she shall testify truthfully by oath or affirmation, administered in a form calculated to awaken his or her conscience to impress on his or her mind the duty to do so. So we can ask them that you do solemnly affirm uh, to testify that the evidence you will give in this, in this matter between the state of Nevada and Mr. Dennis Mindino shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Assertation of that affirmation shall be made by the answering I do. Right? That works. All right. Sir, you solemnly affirm that your evidence and testimony you'll give in this issue between the state of Nevada and the case of Dennis versus Den Kim Dennis Bandino shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Can I consult with counsel? No. This is, you've I already uh, consulted with him. You hey, either buddy, affirm he that you will do the, aff the you give the affidavit. Assertation of aff uh, affirmation shall be made by the answer I do. I gave in case law, Gordon versus Idaho, that affirming and swearing, and the court, no court can mandate it has to be by a particular form. All it has to do is strike the person's conscience, which it does, that I could be prosecuted for perjury. All the federal forms, the state forms of habeas, uh, and even Nevada, uh, Nevada revised statutes allow for unsworn declarations. And if it, it's affirmed, if if I can use the word I concur, I concur that you everything affirm, you, or you can affirm. I cannot affirm because affirm is the same as swear. You're just using a rose by any other name is still a rose. You call it a tulip, it doesn't make it a right. tulip. Either we do it, you just solemnly affirm the evidence and testimony you shall give in this matter between the state of Nevada and King Dennis Blandino shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I can solemnly state that I have, and I can be prosecuted for perjury if I do not tell the truth. I mean, I have, my conscience is as struck maybe more than 99% of You are not years. affirm that you will, that the evidence and testimony you shall give I cannot issue. use the word affirm, sir. All right, Mr. Blandino, so, I don't, I mean, Mr. Uh, Gersten, I don't know what else to do on this matter. Are you getting affirmation from him, which is the uh, subsection of the word affirm, affirmation. Your Honor, I, I mean, I, it's an affirmation. The, the, the root word is affirm. Yes, that's an affirmation. I, I, I don't disagree I, with you. I, 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 I can use the word confirm, affirm. Judge. I can use the word confirm. You can use the word affirm. Affirm is the same as swearing. So, no, so Your Honor, I, affirm, I, and we have no problem. You know, I'll, again. He is quoting Gordon versus Idaho, I think it was. Gave you um, that case. That's his problem. Obviously, you understand why he's now up there on his own without me. I don't know. I don't know what else to, other than quoting that case. You know, this is his solemn belief, or I can't even use solemn, but this is his belief that he can't do what you're asking him to do. I, I have nothing further to add to that. Mr. Dickerson, I don't, I don't know how this is so difficult. I testified in district court with Judge Levitt, and she accepted what I had said. I, every other court I've been in where I've testified, and I have testified in other courts, they have had no problem with this. I didn't even anticipate it would be a problem, but just in case, I gave Gordon versus Idaho, which has been sustained throughout the years. That was an 85 case, I believe, or 87. 
It says that no court can mandate. It has to be in a particular form. As long as the individual given the testimony, give by oath testimony is struck, the Miranda versus, uh, Miranda their conscience versus is struck. I can give you oath or affirmation. That before testifying, every witness shall be required to declare that he or she will testify truthfully by oath or affirmation administered in the form calculated to awaken his or her conscience. So we go by oath. Accept that, Mr. Dickerson? Yes. All right. So by oath, you would agree that testifying that the information that you are to give is, tru is uh, truthful information under the penalty of perjury, that you will testify truthfully under oath. My oath, my yes will be yes, my best will be right. no. All right, I understand that. All right, have a seat. Thank you. Uh, this is a, uh, Mr. Blandino, you may proceed to the elements of these charges. You may give like a, a testimony by way of death. Uh, I have to give a foundation first, of course. My name is Kim Blandino for the transcript. Uh, I'll use the middle initial D, Dennis, I never used. So it's K-I-M, middle initial D, and then B-L-A-N-D-I-N-O. I am. Uh, I was born in uh, 1955 in uh, Great Falls, Montana. I have an Exhibit A to that. Here's a certification of birth record from Montana. I'd like to introduce that. That's Exhibit A for the defense. Uh, so he can testify, Your Honor, but he's not going to be representing himself in moving in Exhibit A. The R objection. Mr. Gernstein. Yeah, Your Honor. Uh, here's the problem. You know, he's got Give him a declaration. I mean, I don't think the question of whether or not he was born as a citizen or not. Again, Your Honor, you understand why I am sitting here and not leading this testimony now. I, I, I don't know. I don't see the relevancy of it. It'll be the court I'll exhibit. Get to that. Allow it in there. Go ahead. For court exhibit only. Go ahead. Okay. Is that going to be entered into? It is court exhibit. Court exhibit A. Okay. The question, the issue is whether or not on the date of September 16, 2022, the resident failed to obtain a Nevada registration and drive without a valid license. Those are the issues that we need to address. Right. Exhibit B is a letter of identification did by my late parents, 1998, that I am who I say I'm in referencing the passport that the defense has is exhibit two or one. I don't know which one it is. That'll be exhibit B. Exhibit C is my Arizona identification legally obtained showing the address Highway 95 number 505 Which is an address that has been maintained by me uh, for At least 25 years, I think Which is not my legal address. It's also in care of uh, Arizona, that's the copy of the Arizona ID. This was presented by judge or by Mar Officer Martinez, and I presented that to her, and she said, well, where's your license? That was when the question of the license was asked. Exhibit D is a declaration of exp exp expatriation filed with the county recorder here in 1993. This is a copy of a certified copy that uh, after researching the law and that Title VIII subsection 2, allows me to lose my nationality without renouncing it at a consulate or anything I intended to bow. Can I object to him even having documents up there, Your Honor? Uh, it's it's well, inappropriate that he's up there with all this stuff. If I may, Your Honor. He's given a narrative. I'm going to allow him. Yeah, I, I, again, Your Honor. It does go towards his defense, and I'll allow it to go. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to ask that everything he has up there then when he gets off, when we take a break in between my cross, that I review every single thing that's up there. Of course. He will well, 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 he whatever he's relying upon in testimony, obviously you have the right to review that. I'm sorry, what word did he say he will do what, sir? All right. Judge? He'll review it. Oh, review it, okay. He has the right to review all those documents that you're oh, relying no, upon in testimony. Agreed. All right, go ahead. Okay, this document uh, clearly, and it was done in 1993, found with, filed with the county recorder here, not with the Secretary of State, but it was filed with the county uh, recorder, and this is, these are certified copies that I have of these documents that, that gave my declaration and statement and purpose to give up my, to lose my U.S. citizenship, to make a vow to Jesus, and to the kingdom of Israel. It is quite a lengthy document. There are many pages in here, and I have stayed true to this since that 1993. 
Um, I, I've been asked to vote, register to vote, and I said, look, I'm not, I had a U.S. citizenship at one time because uh, I was born in this country, but I expatriated. Uh, about 7,500 people a year expatriate from the U.S. to some other country or entity or something. So it's not an uncommon thing to do. Uh, it's not required to do it at a consulate. So that would be Exhibit D. Or wait a minute, is it C? It's D, Ken. Is it D? Okay, I've got a list for the attorney there. This, uh, this is an application for uh, driving privileges at the thing, which is what I had to look at when, before they gave me this denial or disqualification that was filed in this court. In order for me to get this, I would have to perjure myself because it says, I hereby certify under penalty of perjury that all statements in this application are true and correct. And as this later document, the disqualification that was referenced here early would state, uh, I am not a resident of Nevada, therefore I cannot get a driver's license, among, among other reasons. But uh, if I were to say that that 441 is my legal residence, I would be committing perjury if I signed this document. I don't believe any court in the land can require me to commit perjury. Then, what do you have marked as a DVD? Okay, this is the notice of disqualification, and I want to post this in as a, an exhibit. Uh, that's exhibit G. Um, the thing is, is they said, look, you can't get a driver's license for a number of reasons, and they post them and they ran out of lines. This was uh, validated, and this actually is a copy of a certified copy. I asked them to certify this copy for authenticity's sake and to be authenticated under the the that applies statutes on authentication of documents. But the main thing was that um, uh, I cannot, under my religious beliefs and practices, I cannot enter into a contract with the, with the state of Nevada. The state of Nevada basically declared war on me anyway in 1992 when criminal charges were brought against me. That's Exhibit G. Exhibit H, this is a Public Law 97.2 AO, 96 Statute 1211. It's where the Congress said uh, they authorized, the de they designated 1983 as the National Year of the Bible in recognition of both the formative influence of the Bible for our nation and the need to study and to apply the teachings of the Holy Scripture. This is what I, in part, relied on in losing my nationality in 1993, when I saw that Ahab and Jezebel was elected co-presidents of the United States, that would be Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, their co-presidency, as they called it, I said, there's something rotten in Denmark here, and I need to... Listen, we're focusing on... I understand Denmark, that. So I understand that you're saying that you don't, you're not a resident of the United States or a resident of Nevada or a citizen of the United States, so I'm allowing you a little leeway on that, but we will okay. move on from there. You understand? Okay, I've got two addresses for Israel. Now, the state of Israel is separate from the kingdom of Israel. The state of Israel at present is in stewardship for the kingdom of Israel when Jesus returns for a second time, which is predicted, prophesied, and it's going to happen at some point in the future. We don't know. So I've got two addresses that I can go to as soon as I am able to go back to, or to Israel which it would be the state of Israel, but if by the time I get there, it could be the kingdom of Israel. This is the Mount Olives Hotel, 97 Rabbah al Adawaya Street, Jerusalem. And then there's the Abraham Jerusalem Hotel in, um, in uh, Jerusalem as well. I also have written on this, this is exhibit A, uh, exhibit I, 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 exhibit. And it shows that Montana registration address, which was on the registration uh, and the plates that Officer Mead or Detective Mead then confiscated. That's a care of uh, 31903 Lost Creek Lane, Ronan, Montana. I can go to that residence at any time. That's the state of my, my birth. Exhibit J. 
This is a shirt I was wearing that night. I mean, the same shirt I was wearing. I've got 20 some of these. It says, Trump now, Jesus forever, socialism equals slavery, savior equals self-rule. As part of my ministry and being an ambassador for Jesus, um, this has been a godsend. God called me to make these shirts. And wherever I go, I get comments, some negative, some positive. I've been hit on the head with a big, giant purse just for wearing this shirt, atheists have attacked me. So on that was wearing, that's Exhibit J. Exhibit K is the Montana registration at issue. It was a permanent registration. Actually, they say it's permanent, and uh, it really only is good until the year 99.99, so it expires. Uh, so. That gives the Lost Creek Lane address, 331903 Lost Creek Lane, Ronan, Montana, which I can go to at any time. A friend of mine owns that property. That is Exhibit K. Exhibit L, after Detective Meade stole the license plates with no cause off that truck on that night of that stop, these are permanent replacement just plates. I have stole, because the officers can confiscate the license plates if they find that it's unregistered and it's a violation of the court. It was clearly not registered. I produced the registration. It is stricken, that statement. Go ahead. Okay, they confiscated it. Can I use that? You can say that, yes. Okay, they confiscated the license plate. I was never able to recover them. I had to get uh, replacement plates in Montana. And these are those. This is Exhibit L. Exhibit M is the clerk of the U.S. District Court. This is an envelope. From there, I have uh, some suits pending, and you'll notice on there, care of 441 uh, Street. If I were to maintain that as my legal address with the court, they could prosecute me for some kind of misstatement or false statement to the court. Uh, exhibit N, this is a letter from then Chief Judge Du because they were having some filing problems and stuff of the U.S. District Court for, for the District of Nevada. It has the care of 441 North 16th Street. Again, this is dated May 12, 2023. And that's Exhibit N. Uh, this has my change of address from the jail, I think. No, it wasn't from the jail, but May 10, 2023, based on what, showing the care of 441 North 16th. Exhibit, oh, this is a, I was prosecuted in Las Vegas Municipal Court in 2000. It started, ticket started in 2013. I went to trial for not having a driver's license. I was found not guilty. I, unfortunately, this is not a certified copy that I can certify under penalty of perjury that they were found not guilty, showing the same documents that were presented here in the, in the Prosecution's exhibit, and then on my exhibit, I was found not guilty of not of driving without a valid, the same charge here of a valid driver's license. So that was a, uh, there was no judge or jury, obviously. That was Judge Roger in the municipal court, Susan Roger. Exhibit P. Uh oh. I pulled those statutes out of there. Joe, can I get those statutes? Can I approach your honor? Yeah. Thank you. I've got two of those on the table. Before I did all this, I wanted to make sure I was not violating the law. I don't want to violate the law. As a matter of fact, presently, and I'll have this in a uh, subsequent exhibit, I am uh, mandated under conditions of my probation to obey all laws, local, state, and federal. And of course, if any of those happen to be in violation of the Constitution, I still have not been negated the possibility to make a constitutional argument. The statute is unconstitutional at the time. But if it is constitutional, I'll obey it. Um, before doing embarking on all this in 1993 and throughout the years so I've studied the law carefully from uh, the 80s on, I have uh, studied the statutes and uh, that are relevant to this very issue. And NRS, uh, this is one of the statutes I researched, NRS 293.487. 
No person may gain or lose residence by reason of her presence or absence while skipping down to three, an inmate of a public institution. So on let that- me, let, me, let me stop you there yeah. because these are arguments for whether or not he's guilty. This is not an argument. This is what I studied, Judge. So that's not relevant. Isn't that foundation? It's not relevant at this point. That is an argument of whether or not the state has met its burden or whether or not the case should be dismissed. Okay. This is testimony today regarding whether or not you were driving on a motor vehicle on the highway which the public has access to where you were not in possession of the Nevada driver's license or valid driver's license and you were not your vehicle was not registered on September 16th, 2022. That is what we're focusing on. That, and my testimony. And these other arguments are legal arguments. Mr. Gersten can make those arguments at the time of the final argument. All right? Okay. We'll but move, my, on from there. My we'll testimony, move on from there. My testimony. We'll move on from there. I am moving on. All right. So, my testimony is that I am not, that is not my legal residence, 441 North 16. That's a my legal, legal argument. That's a legal argument. We'll move on from there. Well, it's a matter of fact in my mind. I understand that, and that's a legal argument that Mr. Gerson is going to be making. You can say that you were uh, on probation or parole, that you were uh, required to stay in California, Nevada. You can show proof of that, and that would then go to the argument of whether or not you were able or required to be, have a registered vehicle. All right? Okay, well, these statutes that I copied from the NRS, that would be Exhibit P. Exhibit Q, after we left the uh, court last time in this bifurcated trial, I went to get uh, parole probation to see if they would give me an out-of-state travel permit, which I was granted an out-of-state travel permit. And in the reasons they said, uh, it uh, states here, let's see, uh, to escort a friend, part of religious beliefs. So that would be Exhibit Q. That just shows that I have to have written permission in order to, to leave the state. This trip never, ended up not happening. She didn't have to go. But she needed an escort. She asked for an escort. And I was going to escort her, despite the risk of going out of state. Uh, I think there was some false testimony or misleading testimony. I'm, I, I need to rebut. objection as to any testimony given. You may testify. I rebut what you want to say. This is not time for you to rebut. Okay. And to give testimony regarding the issue of driving without a registration or no valid license uh, on September 16th, 2022. Okay. Well, Exhibit R is an order to travel out of state, which I did go see my son get his PhD, and this was granted in 2021. So I wasn't here all that time. I did get permission to travel. Uh, See. Exhibit S is the NRS which I studied on foreign public documents and me being able to authenticate foreign public documents which my passport there is included which will be a further exhibit. This is my judgment of conviction which relates to residency uh, in the uh, trial and puts me on probation. This was the conviction uh, July 12, 2022. And the judge ordered, you shall not leave the state without first obtaining written permission from the Division of Parole and Probation, which is what that document did. Didn't need to use it. Uh, and uh, so that makes me a prisoner of parole probation. You was the amended judgment of conviction. Now this amended con judgment of conviction came right after the uh, the jailing of me and so the judge added this provision in there do not drive a motor vehicle in the state of nevada without a valid driver's license issued by the state of nevada and the department of motor vehicles i have not violated this order not even one inch with that truck i did not drive even though i think she went beyond her scope with that order but i did not violate it that's exhibit U. At this point, Your Honor, I'm just going to move to strike all of it if it's relevant. Well, I think there's some relevancy regarding his JOCs. And not, the, the argument that he is making, the legal argument, is that he is a prisoner of this and is unable to get registration because of that. 
So that does become somewhat resident, relevant. Um, and then the on, the, about on the argument part, I, I object that it's an improper legal opinion. And I agree with you. I think I made that argument or a statement that that is reserved for, for uh, closing arguments. So I'll sustain that as to any legal arguments. Go ahead. I exhibit, uh, I exhibit the defense exhibit V is the passport, Kingdom of Israel passport. The district attorney was kind enough to provide me the means to make a duplicate. Uh, everything on this is true. I'm an ambassador of Christ, Kingdom of Israel, born in 1955, tribe of Judah, Israelite, birthplace, Great Falls, Montana, produced in August of 5th, 1993, sex male, brown hair. That's gone a little bit. Salt and pepper, hazel eyes. 5'8", when I did it, I shrunk about an inch and a half. 180, I've expanded a little bit on that. Then my name, the ambassador, signature of bearer. That's a picture of me back in 1993 with the Star of David with the crucifix on the inside of that. It has the authorization, which is coded to show the address in 1893. Speaks about vaccinations, which the scriptures prohibit defiling a temple with vaccinations. Then it has a driver's license. In the French, it's permis conducive. So this is the out-of-state driver's license or out-of-country driver's license, state, country. And so, uh, this is, has been presented, that exhibit that I had there is what exhibit I number is that? Huh? What exhibit number is that? Oh, it's uh, exhibit B. B? B is in Victor. B. Mr. Mr. Dixon, do you have that copy? I don't have copies of any of those. Oh. No, and this was a B. prosecution uh, B. exhibit as well. Right. A picture of it in any way, a picture of this. Yeah, I just want to make that clear, I believe the state entered that as an exhibit as well. So this may be duplicative, but one of the prosecution exhibits. I'll testify off there. Photographs, I think, that were of the documents. So we're going to pass it. All right, go ahead. And the bottom it says, notice notifying case of emergency in the United States of All America. All right, so we can move on. Okay. The documents there, Mr. Dixon, may we do it? That's exhibit B. Exhibit W, this is also one of the uh, prosecution's uh, wit, uh, exhibits, was a certified dismissal in Boulder City. And the, 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 the city attorney at that time was Gary Booker. I think the judge has been around, Michael Dickerson, know that he's a former district attorney uh, for uh, this county, but he was a city attorney then. He said, Mr. Blandino, I'll dismiss these charges. Uh, except for the tribe uh, license just fax me a copy of your driver's license and it shows in the prosecution's exhibit as well as this that that's a fact the fax page of exhibit v that shows the driver's license my picture and that's what i faxed him and he did in fact dismiss those charges and they certified i got a certified copy of that because god told me that you're going to probably need this at some Here's point that, in the future that was my huh? move on. Uh, Supreme Court of the United States, this is a letter that I just got care of 441 North 16th. That's how they address me here because I can't leave the state without permission. And so that's exhibit W. So on the night I was stopped, the test, I, I, there was a lady with her light blown out on the passenger side. So I, I tried catching up to her and everything, except the stoplight, it was red. I got out of my truck. This is all on the body cam footage. I got out of my truck. I wanted to warn her because I didn't warn her. I and mean, she got in an accident and killed somebody. God would call me to account. If she got in an accident, I didn't do my best to try and stop it. It was on the way home, it was the third light out on a vehicle that I saw and I was able to warn one of the prior two vehicles that they had a light out. So when they, they saw me, they made me turn off uh, their 
Martinez and Neeson were not even going to give me uh, a ticket. They were going to give me a warning. Then they said, well, get a ticket. Then Officer Meek was, was they put a tickler on the computer, and he was to show up. He testified at my prior trial. This guy, in my opinion, had... No objection, Your Honor. Well, see, if we're getting into the opinion, the opinion uh, uh, sustain the objection is the opinion of... You can testify as to what occurred and what happened without giving an opinion and why the officer was there. Okay, he, they were going to uh, uh, let me go on this, issue a citation. He got there and he ordered these people around and ordered to arrest them. The, 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 the passport, driver's license, had already been put away. And he said, wait a minute, what did he present? Oh, I, I want this guy arrested. I want his, this is what he said directly to me. I want him arrested. I want his probation, uh, a hold put on him by probation because of this felony. And uh, uh, these two young officers, Martinez and Neeson, they complied with that in just about every respect. Uh, he was, uh, his demeanor was very uh, vicious and uh, hateful. It was obvious that he wanted to hurt me. And so he thought that, uh, well, I'm going to his thinking. But anyway, uh, he ordered them to do so when they weren't going to do that. And so the truck was towed. He ordered those, he pulled the plates off right there and then, confiscated them. I said, what are you gonna do with those plates? He says, I don't know, I'm gonna turn them in. They, they never got into evidence as far as I know. And uh, I tried, I took a full day to try and track down where those plates were, but it was to no avail. Uh, there, there was no way to recover. So I had to get plates for that truck after I got out of the tow yard, put it into the driveway, didn't drive it again since, or travel in it, or anything. So, um, my legal residence is the Kingdom of Israel. I haven't been there yet. I travel a great deal, Montana, Arizona, I did. And so, I was well aware of the law. I looked at the law on seasonal residency and so on and so forth, and I determined that Without violating the law, as long as I leave the state even once per year, that I could maintain a legal residence somewhere else and, uh, and I could maintain even other residences like uh, in Arizona and then Montana, which I've been back to Montana and Arizona since 1993, and I've traveled in that vehicle. In the Kingdom of Israel, I'm licensed to drive conventional motor vehicles, bicycles, horses, carriage. In this state, I've driven um, backhoes and construction equipment on the road that don't go to 35 miles an hour with the orange triangle, for which a driver's license is not required at all. With an orange slow-moving vehicle uh, triangle in the back of the backhoe on highways. Highway uh, Rancho 95, and not on the freeway. They won't let you go that slow on the freeway. So I used to have a Nevada driver's license, and I used to have an Arizona driver's license. So, but I want what my king wants. He wants maximum amount of freedom. So long as we love our neighbor as ourselves and love God with all our might and do no harm, there is no harm that is done. I have people that will uh, monitor whether, you know, once you get to a certain age, whether you're capable of driving. You know, my mom gave up her capability of driving because she was not able to right, do it. We anymore. can move on from that. All right. So anyway, my understanding of all of this stuff is that this is a valid license. I believe that I've had it ratified by the Boulder City Court by the municipal court. I've been stopped by other officers. They look at it and they say, ah, oh, that doesn't mean anything. Sometimes they have written me a ticket, sometimes they haven't. But the validity of this, I believe, even if there's any kind of dispute, it's arguable that this is a permissible thing under the statute. There was no evil design. Uh, if there has been a mistake of fact in that, it, whether this is a uh, this is a valid driver's license or not. It is not geared toward 
any kind of uh, thing to harm anybody. I know I'm capable of traveling in a car, driving in a car, a horse drawn carriage, whatever. I have the capability to do that. And the statute, as I read it, says a valid driver's license. And to me, there is no reason under my religious beliefs and practices that this shouldn't be held up as valid. It has, as far as Judge Roger was concerned, the Boulder City Court was concerned, other police officers are con concern, uh, concerned. I think it was just my misfortune that Detective Mead had an axe to grind with me. And so that's why, you know, he charged initially, because I had this and a duplicate. There's a, two of these. Uh, I had a duplicate just in case one was lost. I was initially charged with two counts for having the same document, which to me was just incredibly bizarre. So uh, again, just to wrap up, my legal residence is not there. I would be able to travel if not, you know, I, I would love to go to Israel, especially now that things, World War III has just begun. And, uh, you know, to maybe help out in that cause. You know, the state of Israel is held under stewardship until Jesus comes back and travel to Montana and then to Arizona and all. But it, it would have been foolish for me. I, those permanent plates on that truck were something so you don't have to mess with it ever again. But if a vehicle in Montana is 11 years or older, you're allowed to get permanent plates. You pay somewhere around, uh, or you remit somewhere around uh, three years worth of normal registrations, and then it's permanent for as long as you own that truck. As far as they're concerned, until the year 99.99, those plates are good. And so if you can keep a truck alive that long, well, God bless you. So. Uh, as I look at the law, the law I've heard over and over again throughout my whole life that the law is meant to be used as a shield, not a sword. So I constructed my affairs in such a way that I could have a maximum amount of freedom without harming anybody in any way. You know, as the expression growing up, you have the right to extend your arm, but it ends at somebody else's chin. And so this is the creed, and this is what my king teaches. Love God with all your might, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what I've done in trying to stop that lady from driving with a blown out uh, light. It could have stayed in my truck, but God would have held me to account if she got in an accident. And I, was, I had a chance to prevent that by letting her know, hey, pull off the side of the road, you got a bad headlight. Almost got hit by a car one time myself because I thought it was a motorcycle going down the road at night, and it turns out it was just a, a car with a burnout headlight, almost walked right in front of it, right into that car, coming through a crosswalk. So I live by the scriptures, the Ten Commandments, the New Testament, and uh, my, it just, there's just no reason that this can't be deemed acceptable what I'm doing here. I, I would love to have been a, maintain my citizenship of the United States if possible, but God called me to do this. And so. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Blandino. Uh, I need to get some water. I'm getting caught now. Get some water, please. Mr. Uh, Dickerson, then cross examination, and I'll allow you to quit, quit. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to get him some water. Yeah, you want to grab the exhibits while he drinks the water? Yeah. All right. Here, let me gather them up. You're good. Oh, no, 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 you're good. Thanks. No, you're good. Thank you. People say that's good, and that's not good. Let me drop something. So you are a convicted felon. Which one? What are you referring to? Tell me. I'm sorry, I thought you were asking right. questions. Question is, are you a convicted felon? One's convicted. 
Or and when was that? Uh, nineteen ninety-four five. Okay, so you're convicted of a felony in 1994 5. Yeah. You were also convicted of a felony in 2022. That conviction is not final, though, yet. It is a uh, final conviction because it's subject to a judgment of conviction, which you actually have included here, right? No, a conviction is not final until the appeal is decided, and the appeal is still pending. Strike is non responsive and is uh, improperly. Do, do so. Do you have a JOC on this? I, I put that in as exhibit if you want. It's you got a JOC on the yeah. exhibit? He's moved it in. Well, yeah. The court He's tried. It. All right. Am I missing it, Judge? No, 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 not right now. You're being cross again. Okay. Well, why like he's uh, looking for that? Do you know no. what number no. that is? No. Okay. Yeah. The uh, exhibit T is the judgment, and exhibit U is the amended. For speed's sake, I help you this way. If this is going to take a minute, I could use the back one. No, you cannot. You have to sit right there. Yeah, if I get Mr. Mr. Dickerson, hold on now. If you need the bathroom break, right, we'll give him a bathroom break. Right. 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 Give a, some questions you wish to ask, maybe get this done quickly. I do have plenty of questions. I just, uh, I'm sorting through his exhibits here, Your Honor. So, Your Honor, yeah. Your Honor, when Mr. Blandinger brought out his exhibits, it was, I think, decided that and Mr. Dickerson said, I want some time between this time. Just so take a bathroom break right now. I, I'm good. Well, you know, he, he needs a bathroom break. I'll give a bathroom break. That's all this government will from you. Mr. Blandino, you're still under oath. You're going to be able to uh, go take a bathroom break in five minutes on this matter. We'll be back here, right? Well, I'll be less than that, but thank you, Judge. Sorry about that. Mr. Dickerson snuck in. I need to see him come in. All right. He's a sneak. All right. State of Nevada versus uh, Kim Dennis Blandino, 22 CR 041030. Mr. Blandino did take a break to go to the restroom. Mr. So you understand you're still under oath and the penalty of perjury? Right. All right. Mr. Dickerson. So, defendants proposed U and T. These. We would five. have. I want that. I get the exhibits that you had that had been admitted already previously. Yeah, I want. I, if I could get all my exhibits, that'd be awesome. I uh, I have no objection to UNT being admitted. The remaining will come in as court exhibits. Judge, what does that mean as court exhibits? Is it a court exhibit? You know, you're trying to answer questions, not right. ask questions. So, can I proceed, Your Honor? You may. So, Mr. Blade, you know, when was it that you came to Clark County, Nevada? The first time. The first time? Yeah. I'm trying to think. I know it was 1963. How old were you then? Uh, either seven or eight. I don't know what month it was. That's what I was trying to gauge. Okay. And, and how long did you stay that time? Well, I was seven or eight years old, as long as my parents did. And how long was that? I don't recall. Did you ever leave? Yes, all the time. Okay. I traveled. I told you I traveled. And so when did uh, you, you actually come to stay here for a significant amount of time? What, what, what defined here? What's here? Clark County, Nevada. Is Clark County, Nevada include uh, Gene Prison, uh, Indian Springs Prison? Yeah. It does? Okay. Yeah, it does. Does it include Lovelock, Nevada? No. It doesn't include Lovelock, Nevada? Okay. Well, that's more complicated. It was, was when I was in prison from the 90s, I was moved around a lot. And were you residing in Clark County when you were in prison? No, not according to my understanding of the law. When that case occurred, that was in the 90s, right? Yes. You had two children here in Clark County, Nevada. Uh, yeah, 
You, are you asking if they were born here or they were they living were here at the time? Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Okay. And so at that point in time, you had children here in Clark County, Nevada. Ultimately, you took them out of the state of Nevada, right? Uh, ultimately, what, what? You know, with, without getting into too much of what occurred there, right? You're ultimately convicted of taking them out of the state of Nevada, but they, you took them from here, from Clark County, right? Yeah, we went to Montana and then later to Arizona. And then I was picked up by the FBI in Arizona for clarification. Okay. You come back to Nevada, you're ultimately convicted out here. You reside in Nevada. Not my legal residence, no. Okay. How long were you in Nevada from that point? From the time of your conviction and being sent to prison in the 90s? Are you talking about the time I was brought back? Talking to about it all the time. Well, that's not all the time. I, I can't understand a question like that. So if I can clarify, I'll flesh this out for you. When I was brought back by the FBI here, I was put into, I was put into the Clark County Detention Center, mm -hmm. okay, for 28 days. So my understanding of the statute was it didn't change residency. So I'm not a resident when I'm in jail. I'm asking you, how long were you in Nevada? What were the years that you were incarcerated? Do you remember the month and years? Uh, let's see, in 1993. 1993, you were incarcerated? For 28 days. For 28 days. And I was let out on, on, uh, All right, so on bond, so I was still a prisoner. So in 94, were you residing, were you in Nevada? Physically in Nevada? Yeah, I was a prisoner in Nevada. 95, were you physically in Nevada? Yeah, I was a prisoner. 96, were you physically in Nevada? I was a prisoner in the Department of Prisons. 97, you were in Nevada? Physically in Nevada? Yeah, in the prison. 98, were you physically in Nevada? Part of it. I got released on when May. When did you get released? May? 27 of 1998, I believe it was. All right, in 1990, uh, May or June of 1998, were you physically in Nevada? Not the whole time I traveled. Where did you maintain your residence? I maintained a residence in in uh, Arizona, and I maintained the residence that I went when they took the kids. Sorry, Mr. Dixie. In, in, in Montana, I, I maintained those those residences, but neither one of those residents was my legal residence. Right. My legal residence was in the Kingdom of Israel. Okay, Mr. Dixie. Okay. I'm sorry, guy. Thank you, Your Honor. And so, um, one of the places that that you were residing was in Nevada. But not my legal residence, right. Okay, so you're residing in Nevada, 1998, it sounds, right? Yeah. Uh, 1999, you're also residing in Nevada. Traveling, all the lot of time traveling. You were also residing in Nevada during that time? Maintained a residence in, maintained a residence in Montana that I testified to and gave exhibits on, and in Arizona, and then I traveled extensively okay so you, before your most recent conviction you weren't on parole right oh, i'm sorry i'm not understanding that so before you we talked about your recent conviction we moved those judgments of conviction in right i had no objection right. to those right um, everything with that case starts um, happening but when before you're arrested on that case. You weren't on parole from your prior conviction, right? What what time were we talking? I'm I'm, I'm confused. Let's say early 2019. Okay, so early to 2019. Yeah. Okay. Traveling. Okay. Traveling. Yeah. Uh, but you had been uh, staying for some time um, with a woman named Evie Pendergrass. Yes. Yeah, right. Evel Evelyn Sir. Full name and just shorten it. And but I was. I was. How long did you reside with her? Well, traveling, but uh, I checked in on her as much as I could. She was uh, had some health problems. I had to take care of. In fact, I mean, over and over in your court case, you'd indicated to the court, including Judge Levin, multiple times that that you had to be out here in Clark County, Nevada, at four four one. 16 or 16th Street, right? To take care of Evelyn Pendergrass, right? She did not require 24 hour care. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, so I could still travel. Okay. How much care did she require? Well, it depends. I mean, it progressed to where she required more care near the end. How much care did she require? How often did you have to care for her? Well, as you know, from September to October, I, I couldn't give any care because I was in car What year? Huh? Or what year? Oh, September of uh, 20, what was that, 2022? What, what was that arrested? September 2022, the year is splendid. Yeah, 2022 to October 31, I was in the Clark County Detention Center. So before May of 2019, how long had you been uh, staying with Ms. Evelyn Pendergrass? Traveled and then would always... Uh, how long had you been staying with her? I don't understand the question as phrased. What do you understand about it? It's a very simple question. How long had you been staying with Evelyn Pendergrass? What, what do you mean by staying? Staying at her residence at 441 North 16th Street. Off and on, I traveled, I told you that. You would agree that 441 North 16th Street here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada, was originally Evelyn Pendergrass's residence, right? Exactly, that's true. Uh, you would agree that at some point in time, um, you took control of that residence, right? No. Oh, so you, would it be your testimony that you in fact- Wait a minute, what's some point in time? Are you saying prior to death? Prior to death. Okay. Prior to death. What do you mean by take control? Originally, that, that property was her property, right? I, I'm asking you. I don't understand take control. What does that phrase mean? Originally, that property was her property, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then at some point in time, you took part in a transaction to sell that property to a foreign party and then lease it back from them. Is that right? What do you mean take part in? I don't understand that. You took part in that transaction, right? What do you mean take part in? I don't understand you actually helped execute paperwork. I helped Evie with the paperwork, yes. Okay. If you want to say it that way, I helped Evie with the paperwork to sell her house to another party. Yet, you were still living in the house, right? Even after the sale. And traveling. And she, Evelyn Pendergrass was still living in the house. Right. And about what year was that sale? I'm sorry? About what year was that sale? I don't recall precisely. Okay. okay. Before 2019, right? Yes, it was definitely before that. Okay. So you helped sell Evelyn's house out from under her and help lease it back. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to object. I, I don't even know if I can, Your Honor, but the, the, the characterization of you selling it out from under her, like, that's, that's inflammatory. I was just in the objection. Okay, so you please don't do that again. We, we just put please, your finger down. Please, all right, I'm please not, put your enough. finger down. All right, this is enough. He's trying to antagonize me, Mr. Aladino. Just answer the question. But he said he's trying to. He's trying to antagonize me. He's trying to push. Mr. Aladino, it is enough. I think you should reprimand him right now. Move on. Sell it out from under her. All right. Ask the question, Mr. Mr. Right out from Mr. Blandino, if you have one more outburst, you're going to be removed from the stand. I'm sorry, stand. Judge. I apologize. All right, let's go. Go ahead and ask the questions. The residence was hers before that, is what I'm saying. Before what? Before you helped her sell it to a foreign investor and then rent it back for them, right? Yes, it was hers. Okay. And she was an elderly lady at the time, right? The fine elderly? How old was she? I, since I don't know the exact year, she was in her 90s. Okay. I was hoping she'd make it to 100. Okay. And you were living with her helping her? And traveling. And that's in two, before 2019? Right. Okay. And then come uh, 2019, May, in fact, 2019, uh, you were not on parole for your prior conviction, right? Oh, oh, on the one from the 90s. Yeah. No, I was not on parole. Okay. You're not on probation. Right. Okay. And uh, you're maintaining a residence over at 441 North 16th Street here in Los Angeles. As well as the one I'm maintaining in Montana and the one I'm maintaining in Arizona for my, due to my traveling. So that's a yes, right? Yes for an explanation. Okay. So yes, you're maintaining a residence there for one year. Well, years. actually, and technically, Evie's maintaining it. Okay. Well, you you had a room there, right? She made a room available to me. You would sleep there, right? Not always. But you would sleep From there. From time to time, yes. Okay. 
you had an office there. Well, it was, a, it was a bedroom office. You've seen it in the pictures. Yeah, you had lots of documents that you're working on there, right. right? And that's where you maintain your documents, right? Not all of them. Uh, okay. Where were the other ones? Storage. Where was that storage? Don't recall. Okay. You know I had. I know I had some things stored, but my son's, uh, my son's place where he's staying with his grandfather. Okay. And um, in fact, you had been staying over at that residence for years before May of two thousand. And traveling. Okay. And then ultimately, in uh, May of two thousand nineteen, you're ultimately arrested, right? Yeah, the prisoner from that point on. Okay. And uh, till today, actually. And, and till today, you're still staying at four four one North Sixteenth Street, right? And traveling. Now, since this point, uh, Evelyn Pendergrass is dying, right? Well, she died March 23 of 1920. Uh, Wait a minute. It's been one year. March 28th of 2023. Okay. So March of 2023, Evelyn Pendergrass dies, and you're still living in the residence from that time forward. Uh, I'm the executor of her estate. I still have things I have to do for her. She's got tons of stuff in that house that I have to maintain and take care of as the executor. All right. So you had discussed uh, with the court or your counsel that this document from the Nevada DMV notice of denial or disqualification. Is that right? True. You would agree that this document indicates that uh, it's to inform you that you do not qualify to receive driving privileges from the Department of Motor Vehicles for the following reason. Unsatisfactory documentation to receive driving license, right? That's what they put down. Okay, and then they indicated there uh, several things. You would agree those things include no birth certificate. Can I take a look at that again? On my memory of what they wrote is not 100%. Yeah, bro, John. You may. Let me give you a second to look at this, okay? Okay. You want me to repeat what no, I said? No, no, I'll just ask you a question. Okay. Stage, run out of stage. Yeah, okay. okay. Good. This looks good. That refreshes your That doesn't record. mean I can't forget it by the time you get over there. The memory's not what it used to be. Well, we can keep doing this. It's okay. All right. So that would include no birth certificate, right? Did they put that on there? Yeah. Oh, okay. No passport? I don't think it says no passport. So okay. Jason, you want to stand up there and read it to him? Yeah. Yeah, because, it, really yeah, because uh, he, I think he's just he, he hold does on, these little hold tricks. On. Mr. Blandino, he'll read it to you. It's an exhibit. Are we moving this into evidence at this point? Sure, we can move this in. This does not say what, no what passport on it. What, what, what exhibit is this? Oh, well, I'm sorry. He does say not. I'm sorry. I apologize. Not. It does what say no birth certificate. Just no the exhibit. What's the exhibit number? Or, or if we could just make this next in line. That's fine. I think six. That's six. Yeah. Well, I, I had to put an exhibit letter. Oh, then we're going to make it that. What exhibit is it? Defense exhibit what? You've got the list there. Are you asking me, Judge? Uh, let's see. Would be exhibit G, Your Honor. Exhibit G. G. Exhibit G. Exhibit G. We're stipulate yeah. to admit it at time of preliminary hearing, right? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. Trial. Okay. <laughs> Back me up. 